Extends uh, scheduled bills, hearings, and on consideration. Item A, Ordinance Amending Chapter 22, Law Enforcement, Article 2, Police Division, Division 1, generally, by adding Section uh, 22-30, community, community Policing and Immigration of the Revised Ordinance of Cities and Falls. I will collect the time sheet for the COVID-19. Thank you. Two pieces of paper that I pass to you are testimony, uh, written testimony of two people who are going to come up and speak. So there are two sets. Okay, we we'll now open the public hearing. Um, David Velez. <coughs> Central Falls City Council members. Uh, my name is David Belize. Uh, I'm a policy advocate for Progresso Latino. As many of you know, Progresso Latino is a community-based organization located here in Central Falls that for 42 years has worked to empower Rhode Island's Latino and immigrant communities. I'm here tonight because Progresso Latino is a strong supporter of the community policing and immigration ordinance. I'm not only here as Progressive Latino, but also as a member of the Immigrant Coalition of Iran and as an immigrant. And someone who grew up undocumented and traversed the immigration system while in fear of being prosecuted. We'd like to thank Councilwoman Vega, Jessica Vega, for introducing this resolution and all the other city council members who have continuously shown support for immigrant rights. <clears throat> We also like to thank the ACLU and the members of the Immigrant Coalition who are here tonight. And we hope that. Some ask, some ask why we need it. <laughs> it's like I'm doing stand up now. I gotta be funny. Um, some ask why we need a resolution that guarantees that law enforcement agencies won't collaborate with immigration enforcement. And the fact that we have to ask that question is exactly what we needed. We live in tumultuous times with increasing negative rhetoric and sentiment against immigrants. The conversation has shifted away from fixing an immigration system to wanting to criminalize immigrants and through harmful policing hurt them and their families. That is why we are supporting this resolution. Because we want to send a resounding message that here in Central Falls, Instead of fear and hate, we will cultivate love and acceptance. And that we would not criminalize people for seeking a better life for themselves and their families. I feel like I also need to acknowledge that right now, we have asylum seekers who are being incarcerated at the Wyatt Detention Center. And I see this resolution as a moving forward to making sure that we're not adding any more people to the criminalized immigration system. Central Falls, which has a large immigrant population, I've heard 80% from a lot of different people, will see several positive impacts from this resolution, such as it would help strengthen relations between law enforcement and the community, which builds trust and community cohesion, it will allow community members to receive vital services without living in fear, as well as let members of our community continue to contribute to the economy without living in fear. It would add protections for victims of crime, and it will solidify immigrant protections that every community should have. I hope that Central Falls passes this resolution and continues to lead on protecting the immigrant community. Um, thank you again for your time and for listening. And thank you again for Councilwoman Vega for introducing this resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next, Anin Castello. Happy good evening. Uh, my name is Anin Castello. I'm a community organizer for Planned Parenthood of Southern New England. I am here in support of creating Section 2-333, the Community Policing and Immigration Ordinance. Nationally, immigrant communities have come under attack from the Trump administration, and ICE has been weaponized to make undocumented people feel fearful of deportation rates in their communities. This can make undocumented residents feel even more fearful of seeking the health care they need. At Planned Parenthood of Southern New England, the leading reproductive health care provider in the state, we believe this is wrong and health care should have no borders. To support our undocumented patients, we are organizing alongside the Immigrant Coalition of Rhode Island, to limit the local cooperation with ICE agents in Central Falls. Creating Section 2-333, the Community Policing and Immigration Ordinance, would allow equal accessibility to essential community resources and services while promoting public safety. National research and data suggest a direct correlation between sanctuary cities and improved quality of life for undocumented people, their families, and the wider community. According to a 2017 research analysis by Professor Wong from the University of California and the National Immigrant Law Center, sanctuary counties contribute more civic participation to the economy uh, compared to non-sanctuary counties. In fact, unemployment is on average 1.1% lower in sanctuary counties compared to non-sanctuary counties. As a result, the poverty rate is 2.3% lower on average in sanctuary counties compared to non-sanctuary counties. When communities feel safe, they participate in the health services they need and stay engaged in the local economy. We can create similar conditions in Central Falls by implementing safeguards to protect undocumented community members, which present one less barrier for them accessing ne necessary health care. At PPS, at PPS &E, we believe all people, regardless of where they come from, deserve access to high quality, affordable health care. Lack of protection for undocumented communities singles out and targets those most in need of access to care. By passing the Community Policing and Immigration Ordinance, Central Falls will join South Kingston by limiting cooperation between local law enforcement and ICE. Let us work to ensure all Rhode Island municipalities pass enactments that provide undocumented Rhode Islanders with ways they can access the important services they need. Immigrant inclusive policies help to build better and healthier communities, stabilizes families, and drives economic activity. Planned Parenthood of Southern New England supports the Community Policing and Immigration Ordinance and urges the Central Falls City Council members to pass Section 2 333 to protect access to health care for all Central Falls residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Anna Torres. <coughs> Hi, good evening everyone. Um, I'm here today as a representative of the Immigrant Coalition to express support for per Council Person Vegas Ordinance. Um, <clears throat> the Immigrant Coalition's mission is to monitor and respond to immigration policies and ensure access to essential services for undocumented Rhode Islanders. The passage of this ordinance coincides with the Coalition's work to support state level and local enactments that create safe communities for immigrants by limiting the circumstances in which schools, agencies, and local law enforcement coordinate with Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Uh, the Coalition provides lawyer rights workshops and legal consultations to undocumented residents, including detainees being held at the Wyatt Detention Center in Central Falls. Uh, since April, the Coalition staff attorney has provided 141 legal consultations, including 51 to detainees at Wyatt. Through the outreach of active Coalition members in Central Falls, we've determined that a lot of community members support passing protections for their immigrant neighbors. Um, the passage of this ordinance will limit the collection of immigrant-related information um, and thus ensure non-discriminatory access to benefits and services for all community members in Central Falls. Undocumented residents experience instability and fear that has been greatly exasperated by the current administration's policies. Given this political climate, it is important that municipalities within our state take active steps to make Rhode Islanders, all Rhode Islanders, feel secure and valued. Enacting this policy, this, the Community Policing and Immigrant Ordinance will promote equal access to services and all protections. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, Next, Tia? No, no, no. I, You're not? Yeah, I'm also. Thanks. Next, uh, Carl from the ACLU. Good evening. Um, my name is Carl Kruger. I'm a volunteer attorney at the Rhode Island affiliate of the ACLU. Um, the uh, proposed ordinance uh, that's before us tonight is a response to the Trump administration's efforts to compel the local jurisdictions, local law enforcement agencies to cooperate in the enforcement of civil immigration laws. Uh, this proposed ordinance is a public safety measure. It contains a variety of provisions, for example, requiring judicial warrants before local law enforcement entities will uh, have to honor ICE detainers. It assists victims of crimes who may be eligible for special immigration statuses. Uh, it rejects participation in a program known as 287G that essentially deputizes local police to serve as immigration agents. And uh, it, it, this enables uh, the local law enforcement agencies from engaging in federal immigration enforcement. Um, this is a public safety measure. Uh, the result of law enforcement agencies on a local level participating with the federal immigration authorities is uh, going to be uh, a chilling effect on the participation of a large part of society, a large part of the community, in cooperating with police. Whether they're victims of crimes, whether they're witnesses to crimes, they're going to be chilled from coming forward and assisting the local enforcement, local law enforcement, if they are afraid that it's going to jeopardize an immigration status. Uh, additionally, this is going to affect a larger group of people because there are many, many families in Rhode Island that are mixed in the sense that there are people whose immigration status is not yet regularized, living with U.S. citizens. And the, those legal residents are going to be much more disinclined to participate in local law enforcement efforts if they feel that family members are going to be put at risk uh, by cooperating with the police. This has already been seen in various parts of the country. Uh, victims of domestic violence are not showing up in court uh, because ICE has targeted courts as a safe place to locate individuals. So again, this is a, this is a public safety measure. Um, it, it's simply bad policy to be driving a portion of the, uh, of the community um, into a fear of cooperating with the police. We need the cooperation of all of our residents in order to, uh, to, to effectively um, uh, assist law enforcement in their, in their jobs. Um, the Trump administration has threatened to strip local jurisdictions that have enacted ordinances of this, of this sort uh, from getting federal funding for certain projects. Uh, federal courts around the country have to a court um, declined to accept that, uh, that argument from the Trump administration. Um, it, so the ACLU, of course, is, uh, is more than willing and able to help you in any efforts if, uh, if, if that were to arise. Uh, so again, I thank you. I thank you for consideration of this, uh, this public safety ordinance, and uh, I hope that it's able to be enacted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Probably going to butcher this name, but is it Celine May? Celine May? Celine Means. Means May. Uh, is that the, the sign up sheet? Yeah. yeah. Um, you want to speak? I thought you want to speak. Did you sign up on the sign up sheet? I did. Uh, I don't know if they put me there. No, no so you should speak. Okay, I'll I suppose I can take the place. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, thank you for the work, especially for the people that is working for this initiative. This kind of initiative is with me in this moment. Now, in the future, always things happening. I'm here to talk about, uh, to represent the uh, Alliance to Mobilize a Resistance, AMOR. We're a grassroots coalition that is working in Rhode Island. Uh, we support all the people that is facing 
states violence and indi individual too. In this case, is related with immigration issue. We know that we have, I am immigrant, but also I know too many people, neighborhoods, friends, family, but also for my work, I'm working with many people that don't have document and each day they are facing those troubles, like having difficult mental health issues because fear, because of also like don't have support or they don't really want to say what they're happening in their life because if I'm going to see the police, do they are going to take me with eyes? And we can say like yes or no. They shouldn't like if, if you don't have anything, why they're going to do that? But we we can say that because we don't have a tool. If this uh, community policing and immigration ordinance pass, definitely we can work and say you can do this. If something happens in your life or something or somebody makes you something, you can go because we have this. We can say like to these people or to our community that they have something like they can help them, they can pro that can protect them, but at this moment we don't have it. I can say my experience working in Providence with people that is living in Providence, they have also their the Community Safety Act, that also that is a tool for us. We know like this is an ordinance that passed in 2017, June, I think just, just last year. We can, if this pass, definitely we can use this to support our community. And the the community, immigrant community, especially undocumented immigrants, they need support. Um, they don't really have too many tools or legal support for them. The last thing we can do is to provide this. And this is not going to be like a big, like, it's not going to resolve their problem, but at least we're going to give them peace, we're going to give them some protection, and all the people say also that, is there some benefits? Why we can give that? Only that. It's, I don't think, in my view as a community member, I don't think that it's there too many costs to pass this. Um, community policy and immigration ordinance. Then I really encourage you to pass it, to yeah, support as a more we are as a more members to really support this because we know that our community need it. It's an emergency need. It's not in now. Our community is already affected. It's already we are not only talking about adults. Also, it's about kids, children. When they are seeing their family being attacked for people on the street, that is something that is affecting our community. And um, yeah, is there too many benefits on it? And yes, thank you so much. Please support this initiative. Thank you. Uh, we don't have anybody else signed up to testify. Um, is there anyone who would like to come up and speak? Um, Make a motion to approve the ordinance. No, it's, uh, it's only the first reading. Yeah. Mr. President, <laughs> Mr. President, there is a sub A before the council, uh, which I would like to point out the change, which is on page two. Section D. Um, this is a change the council in Vega um, received via request from the ACLU to add a section regarding the prohibition around political surveillance. And that new section is on page D, uh, page two, section D, um, about midway down. That's the only change before you, but you will need to consider um, approving the, the substitution and then approving at this time, so I remove my motion and I submit a motion to approve the sub A of the ordinance. Second. 
Well, but then we would vote on that to so move to as a substitute. Okay. So I move to substitute the original ordinance with the sub A before us. Here we have a motion by Councilman Costa. Second. Second by Councilman Salona. All those in uh, roll call. Councilman Acosta? Yes. Councilman Ferry? Uh, yeah, I apologize. Sorry. We have a motion by uh, any discussion. No. Roll call. Okay. Councilman Acosta? Still yes. <laughs> yes. Councilman Ferry? Yes. Councilman Figueroa? Yes. Councilman Solano? Yes. Councilman Vega? Yes. Councilman Solano? Yes. Motion carries. I make a motion to approve the ordinance as amended. We have a motion by Councilman Acosta. Second. Second by Councilwoman Vega, Councilman Salome, Councilman Figueroa. Any discussion? Yes. Um, so I first want to acknowledge the both the ACLU and the Rhode Island Immigration Coalition for the language they provided in the guidance on this ordinance. Um, I also want to point out that I believe the CF Police Department has done a pretty good job establishing trust within the community, um, something that started with former Colonel Mendonca and continues with Colonel Barkowski that we met a couple of months ago on this ordinance. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, both the city solicitor and uh, Colonel Murkowski mentioned two important things when it comes to this ordinance as well. The reason why, and thank you to all the public commentators, I will just echo what you said, it's so important that we codify this into law, is because one, we want to make sure to send a clear message that our law enforcement isn't going to be collaborating with ICE, and most importantly, to continue, or, or to make people feel more comfortable and a sense of belonging in this community. No one should feel as though they shouldn't call the police because they, feel there's a chance for, uh, that, they may be, that they might be deported. We want our residents, both documented and undocumented in this community, to feel free to walk here, uh, to continue with their lives as normal, and not to have to feel afraid that ICE or anyone else is going to come to the city to detain them. However, there are some limits to this ordinance, um, and I would love for our city solicitor to kind of talk about what those limits are, because I think it's really important for the public to know what those are as well. Sure, Councilwoman. So um, this ordinance creates Section 22-30, uh, Community Pl Policing and Immigration. Section A um, speaks to the legislative findings, which is, um, as the Councilwoman stated, very well said about creating trust and respect between law enforcement community and city residents, and uh, understanding that law enforcement needs the trust of the community in order to do its job. Section B um, uh, speaks to the limitations on the activities of members of the Central Falls Police Department. Uh, specifically, the ordinance says the Central Falls Police shall not stop, question, interrogate, investigate, or arrest an individual based solely on any of the following, either actual or suspected immigration or citizenship status, or a civil immigration warrant, administrative warrant, or an immigration detainer in an individual's name, including those in the National Criminal Database, known as NCIC. Um, in addition, um, Central Falls Police shall not inquire about the immigration status of an individual or a crime victim or a witness or a person who calls or walks into the police department or approaches the police seeking assistance. Um, so I was referring to the exceptions to the rule of the ordinance. My apologies. Uh, the exceptions. So for example, when it comes to warrants. So uh, that section speaks to Councilwoman um, civil immigration warrant, an administrative warrant, or an immigration detainer. Uh, however, the department uh, will be required to um, uh, respond to a judicial warrant, which is a warrant issued by a court of law. And that's on page two, section two. 
Um, and if the department receives a judicial warrant, um, then it is under is obligated to to um, respond to that. Thank you. I think that's sorry for missing. No, that's okay. Question. I think that piece is really important for the public to to understand as well. Um, I also would love for our Colonel Braskowski Braskowski to please come up and kind of talk about what the implementation of this ordinance looks like and what the police department does now. Colonel Dan Bozikowski, Central Falls Police. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk. Uh, thank you for working with me uh, to get this uh, ordinance uh, going. So um, a lot of things contained in this ordinance are policies we already follow. Um, we're following best practices being a, a, a CALI accredited department. So working together with this, just once again, give us an opportunity to continue building the public trust um, to let our residents know um, our practices will continue. Um, as far as a, a warrant where we would have to enforce would be, as, as the solicitor said, a judicial warrant uh, where there's a criminal charge pending and it's signed by a judge acknowledging that um, we will not honor civil warrants or detainers. So once again, uh, our, our community should have uh, trust in that. And I just want to address the community that's here really quickly. Um, I'll keep this microphone. Um, I appreciate everybody coming forward. Saying what you've said, uh, being here to support this, uh, this is just another opportunity for our community to build trust with our police department. And your words have not gone unnoticed even prior to this coming forward. And once again, I just want to acknowledge uh, Councilman Vega's work to make this happen. It's been a pleasure working with her. Thank you. If there's any questions anybody has, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Yeah, I'd like to interject uh, seeing you here. Certainly when I first looked at this, uh, there was a couple of red flags and uh, the colonel so graciously uh, answered my phone call twice in two days and I think my concerns were already cleared up. Uh, number one was the dialogue between the police department and uh, uh, the council, or in this case, uh, Council One Vega. Um, and I'm so happy to hear that there was a dialogue. My, my concern was you know, did the police get input? And certainly, uh, the colonel said absolutely. So that threw that red flag. The other flag, red flag I had, I really want to know if we were, or if this puts us in conflict with any federal laws. Councilman Ferry, in the summer of 2018, the city of Central Falls, along with City Province, went to federal court and we sued the Trump administration over the Trump administration's attempt to hijack our federal burn jag funding and to require immigration related conditions on the receipt of those federal funds. So there's a federal statute that says Central Falls is entitled to about $30,000 a year for things like technological upgrades for our servers and other um, resources for the department. Um, Sessions in Trump and the Department of Justice changed those conditions without the approval of Congress to say um, Central Falls can only accept this money if you agree to deputize your police officers as, as federal immigration agents. Um, we refused to sign and return that document. Instead, we went to court. We won a decision by the judge uh, restraining the, the Department of Justice from enforcing those conditions. And we actually just last week filed our brief at the First Circuit Court of Appeals, um, which shall hear the, the matter before the end of the year. Um, so that's a long way of saying um, this has been the practice of the department. We have taken this matter to federal court. A federal court judge has said that the policies of this department are lawful and just, and the president's attempts to uh, hijack local police departments to do the job of the federal government are unlawful and unenforceable. Thank you. And the third one I had is already cleared up by you, Matt, and also by the Colonel uh, with a phone call, I believe, today. And I, I didn't know the difference uh, between the uh, uh, various warrants, and, and the key, of course, is what you just said, the, uh, the warrant from the judge is signed. So that's the major difference, that signature from the judge, and I thank you again, Colonel, and you just re uh, reinforced that. With that said, I don't know her name, but the person in the paint. Catarina Lorenzo. 
really hit home, and I thank you. Um, and I'm sure that there are there's violence that's not reported um, uh, throughout everywhere throughout the country. And that I listened carefully to what you said, and it kind of hit home. Um, so with that, uh, you certainly have my vote. And thank you, Colonel, for answering my phone call. <coughs> calls, and thank you, Matt, for, and Jessica, for your work. And it's good to see that it was a dialogue. I didn't realize that over the weeks or months. So thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? I just want to thank uh, everyone that came, came out today to speak uh, on this ordinance, and also wanted to thank the, the chief of police for the job and the trust that he put in the city center force. Any other questions or comments? Okay, at this time I'd like to take a roll call vote. Councilman Acosta? Yes. Councilman Perry? Yes. Councilman Figueroa? Yes. Councilman Solano? Yes. Councilman Vega? Yes. Council President Silva? Yes. Motion carries, Mr. President. Thanks, Madam Clerk. Next item is Ordinance Amendment Chapter 12, Businesses Article 1 in general.